You must have felt the vibrations of this place. They are tremendous. And that we should come here after so many years is really very much surprising. <coughs> uh, this place has a great connection with me as such because my forefathers ruled in this place and this was the capital of Shalivanas. It's called as Pratishtha, then they made it easier as Paitan. They were the rulers here for thousands of years and they are the ones who started this Shalivahan uh, dynasty. Actually they called themselves as Sat Vahan, means seven uh, Vahanas. They represented the seven vahanas or the seven chakras. It's surprising how it is so sahaj. After that, there was a great poet, as you know about him, Ganeshwara. Came here, he was born very close to this place, who was here for quite some time. And there was one fellow who was a very supraconscious person who challenged him, his name was Changdev. So he <laughs> said that, what do you have with you to show that you have got God with you? And there was a male buffalo with him, male buffalo, which was just walking on the road and Ganeshwara made that buffalo say Veda mantras. And this Changdev tried to show some tricks. Ganeshwara with his brothers and sister was, sit was sitting on a broken wall and he made the wall move with all of them in the air. And then he realized, Changdev, that this is some sort of an incarnation on this earth. Apart from that, there's another great poet called Eknath, who has written lots of uh, folk songs like Namadeva, describing Sahaja Yoga. So this place had some sort of attractive focus of vibrations for all these great saints to come and settle down. They have excavated lots of old things about this place and the sari that is given to the Goddess here is made in this place called as Paitani. It started at the time of Shalivahana and that art is still there. That's the only sari in which they use real gold as the thread, real gold, just for the Goddess. So this place is still very vibrating, is out of the way for the people to come down, thank God. So it still maintains its own vibrations and its goodness and its purity. And you are all very lucky people in this group to have come to this place and to have visited this. As you will go round, you will see there is a beautiful garden next to it. The river Godavari is called as the Ganga, the Ganges of the south. It starts from Nasik where you were before, and then brought here and a big dam is made for the supply of water all over, which you can see on your way. There's a beautiful garden nearby and Eknatha's temple is just behind here, so you, we can all go and have a look at it also. I'm happy you went and saw Ajanta Caves should show you how people were dedicated to build all that in ten centuries. 
They had not seen Buddha at all. Buddha never came to the south of India. Just believing in Buddha, what work they did, what sacrifices, how they built it. They had to go through very difficult times because there was no water, there was no communication, nothing. And they used the stones you must have seen there of different colors and different hues which are created by Mother Earth. And when you break them and strike those egg-like stones, you get beautiful semi-precious stones. They dissolved them into some sort of an indigenous solvent and used it for painting. And that's how the paintings are today surviving. You can't see without lights, so how they must have painted it at that time, what sort of eyes they must be having. Their dedication gave them this power that they could build it. They carried on for ten centuries this world. If Sahaja Yoga can be carried for ten centuries, this world would be a different place. So one has to learn that we have to dedicate. We must fully dedicate ourselves. We are not here to gain everything out of surgery. Like in the beginning people have problems about their families, so they think that God should solve the problem because they have come to Sahaja Yoga to oblige Sahaja Yoga now, so God must solve their problems. Now there are problems of their jobs, God must solve the problem. If there are problems with their relations, God must solve the problems. That's the sort of a job given to God because they have very graciously joined Sahaja Yoga. Then after that God must give them money, He must provide them for everything and He must look after them. For no commitment at all, there's no commitment. Nobody has any commitment in Sahaja Yoga. But God is committed and God has to work it out. Then they start, some people foolishly start using Sahaja Yoga for other purposes like earning money or earning power or name or fame or domination or anything. These are the steps which are going down, not upwards. And then once you go down, you don't realize whether you are going upward or downward. So in dedication, one has to see what have I dedicated for such. All the time I have problems, all the time I say, I can't do this because of that, I can't do that because of this, this is the problem, this I would like to do, this I would like to do. All the time there's an I, I, I and I. But what have I dedicated? What time have I given <coughs> to Sahaja Yoga? How much money have I given to Sahaja Yoga? Nothing at all. People don't even take leave for Sahaja Yoga. They can't do anything for them. These people not only took leave but permanently went and settled in that place, in that far-fetched place, without any machinery, without anything. They did that whole painting and the whole uh, excavation and all that, uh, what you call the entire work of such a tremendous volume that is impossible in these modern times. Nobody can recreate something like that with all your machinery, with everything, because people don't have dedication. So for Sahaja Yoga, we have to put ourselves onto a point, what did I do, what did I sacrifice for Sahaja Yoga? Nothing. It's only for my own child or maybe for my wife or for myself or for my job or for something. What is our commitment? And without commitment, purity cannot come in. It will go up and down like a yo-yo. We are committed to Sahaja Yoga. If there are even five people who are really fully committed to Sahaja Yoga, it can be built up that way. But the problem is, Everybody shares with each other this kind of non-committal behavior and that's something not good. Committed means even if we have to give our life, we should do it. 
<coughs> even if we have to give up everything, we should do it. But all other considerations are to be taken there. Everything should work out. So all should be joy all the time. You must get your jobs, you must get your wives, you must get your everything, children properly done, everything to be done by Sahaja Yoga. And when this commitment will start, I'm sure Sahaja Yoga will spread like anything. Even falsehood, when people are committed, like you see in all other religions, every religion, they did that. And how much it has spread. Of course, Sahaja Yoga is blessings, is blissful. It blesses you all the time. It gives you a very long rope to hang you also sometimes. One must know. That's a blessing of that kind also. So one has to be very, very alert that God has chosen us for such a special work and we have to be fully committed to Sahaja Yoga. All those who are wise will take to this and understand that the life is only worth this, otherwise it's useless, it's good for nothing. It has no meaning. And this has to come from first from the leaders and then from others. Complete commitment to Sahaja Yoga. It doesn't mean that you have to give up anything. For my sake you don't have to do anything. But for your own sake, for your own betterment, you have to do it. I hope next time when you come to India you will be coming better prepared for commitments. It's not only money, it's not only uh, you are talking about, you are saying about it, writing about it, but it is through your own being it should happen. You all should become the source of energy that I want to emit all over the world, that light which is going to enlighten. No amount of artificiality is going to work it out, but complete genuineness within you. Look at these saints, they had nobody, they had, didn't have mother to help them. This uh, Ganeshwara's life, if you read, you'll be shocked. He didn't have even shoes to walk. He was cheated so sh badly because his father was a sannyasi and was married. So they said that he, these are the children of a sannyasi. They had no food to eat, they had to walk for miles together, bare feet. They had no blessings of the mother on them. Despite that, they kept to Sahaja Yoga, they kept to their blessings of being one with God. Because they achieved that state. Now all this is for your good, for your benevolence that you get all the blessings. But that doesn't mean that you should stagnate, that you should not progress. One has to progress higher and higher. One has to decide a commitment. I am committed to Sahaja Yoga. And that is what you have to be committed. May God bless you.